RNG is something that's a little bit lacking in Warzone 1 compared to other battle royales. Your loadout gun is always going to be better than any ground loot gun, no matter the rarity. However, there are a handful of guns and items that are exclusive to ground loot and are extremely rare. So today I want to share with you the rarest items in Warzone history. The only criteria I have for this is it has to be something that you can equip, use, or stow in your inventory. I'm also not going to include LTM. That being said, there's going to be no camo, operator, charm, or any cosmetic from the store that will be on this list. But go ahead and comment the rarest item you found in war zone. The grenade launcher in Warzone 1 was a gun many didn't even know was in the game until weeks after launch. With a staggering 1% drop rate, there was absolutely no other way of getting the grenade launcher other than looting nonstop and hoping for the best. What I liked about this gun being so rare was that it was actually pretty dang good and made finding it exciting and something that didn't happen every game. Say you're playing squads on Verdansk and a teammate finds a grenade launcher. The match immediately turns into a game of finding the nearest helicopter and converting it into a makeshift AC-130. It was a super troll weapon, don't get me wrong, but I don't really find a problem with that since because how rare it was it made it even more fun to use since you didn't know the next time you're gonna be able to use it. The same grenade launcher was brought back into Warzone 2 and saw a similar fate where you could only get it off ground loot and it was also pretty good. However with the release of Modern Warfare 3 they added a grenade launcher to multiplayer that you could also equip your loadout in Warzone 3 and it is honestly one of the worst guns in the game. It looks and feels just like the Warzone 1 GL but it is just not. I'm not saying they need to buff it but they need to just bring back the Warzone 1 grenade launcher and keep it the same way where you can only find it in ground ground loot. This was another item that completely shifted all motives for the match you were currently in. There were several bunkers scattered around Verdance that you couldn't open. It wasn't until they decided to add the access key cards to the ground loot. These were about as rare as the grenade launcher, maybe just like a little bit more common or so it felt. I couldn't really find a number for this. But once you found a key card, you and your squad would immediately book it to the nearest bunker, which mind you wasn't marked on your map, which you either had to find a picture of it with all of them marked on a map that someone put it on Reddit, or just know where they are by memory. Once inside the bunker, you were overwhelmed with an insane amount of loot and a crazy amount of money that would immediately have you set for the rest of the match. This was one of my favorite features of Verdance because it gave you a small objective to work towards during the match and since it didn't happen every game it felt super special. <laughs> Another gun that you didn't find every day while playing Warzone was the minigun. This gun was first added to the game during the Bunker 11 Easter egg and was also featured in my Forgotten Guns video because of how rare it was. If you've already watched my Forgotten Guns video, I'm about to repeat myself a little bit. And if you haven't watched it, maybe watch it after this one. For starters, I doubt a lot of you even tried the Bunker 11 Easter egg because of how much coordination and patience it required. I'm also one of those people. I just can't really do the whole like patience and steps and looking up and like finding a squad to do it. It's just kind of like a little overwhelming for me. But if you ended up doing that Easter egg, you would get the first ever minigun added to Warzone. However, where you most likely used your first minigun was during the Juggernaut Royale mode that came a few months later. But like I said earlier, we're not going to include that in this video. So the next time it would be available was actually through the bunker keycards that I just mentioned. After the Bunker 11 Easter Egg, the other bunkers would now have a chance of dropping not only Juggernaut armor, but the minigun as well. Keep in mind, now when you got a bunker, you would just have a chance of getting the minigun, not even guarantee it. Later on on Rebirth, there is a separate bunker Easter Egg that required you to go to prison and interact with the phones to get a code that you had to manually enter that code in to unlock the bunker, which then had the minigun as well. Also a pretty tedious task in my opinion. One. Eight, Eight. one. Okay. One. one. Two. Then on Fortune's Keep, we had the Black Market Supply Run contract. This unlocked the Black Market buy station that had a ton of exclusive loot you could buy from it that you couldn't get any other way. One of which was a Nebula Round Fed minigun, and this thing was wild. Then in Warzone 2, you have the Black Sites, which we all know goes something along the lines of clear stronghold, get key, go to Black Site, clear Black Site, kill Juggernaut, and take minigun. Mind you, you have to do this while there's other players trying to do the exact same thing, which isn't exactly easy. However, in Warzone 3, strongholds are now a random in game event which doesn't happen as often which makes it even more rare today. As far as for the gun itself in Warzone 1 I thought it was really good and a lot of fun to use. Kind of like the grenade launcher where like it was it wasn't like super practical but in the situations where it worked it absolutely dominated. But for some reason in Warzone 3 it feels off to me. I mentioned in the previous video that I think the game is played much more differently mainly focusing on like movement and mobility and when you have the minigun those two things just go completely out the window. But it's a fun gun to use and it's kind of exciting when you get to see it.
So the first time you could get specialist bonus was actually through this subway easter egg, which I had absolutely no idea about. When I made my forgotten features video, I mentioned specialist being first introduced with the 80s action hero event, but I was completely wrong about that. It was really available a whole half year prior to the event within this easter egg. After doing some crazy decrypting of numbers, paintings, codes, computers, and whatever else, you get access to the subway underneath for dance. And then it would take you to the secret room, which was pretty much a bunker on steroids. You had multiple miniguns, juggernaut armor, some exclusive blueprints, advanced UAVs, but what we're really here for is the specialist bonus. Like I said, I didn't even know about this until someone in my comments pointed it out as the first time specialist was added to the game. Well, I'd say this is pretty dang rare. We all know what specialist did, giving every perk in the game, and it was yet another thing that it didn't come by often whatsoever. We've had a handful of more ways to get it, such as the 80s action hero event where you could get through the tower once you got into the vault, which really wasn't all that easy because every person in the lobby was going for it as well. This was when it was more so kind of like in the public eye where people were like making videos, oh, how to get specialist bonus in Warzone or whatever. Aside from LTMs and miscellaneous ways to get it, I think the most common way was on Rebirth Island through the shower where you got like a key card that would open up the vault in the stronghold. This was also probably like the easiest way to get it, I think. For a period of time, I think you could buy it at a buy station. I honestly, I don't remember this. I don't know if it was an LTM or if it was just like a feature they had in the game for a little bit. I know it wasn't around like later on in the game. Nowadays, we don't have specialists and haven't had specialists since Warzone 1, but we're supposed to get it back in Season 3 Reloaded of Warzone 3, so I'm excited to see how you get it when it comes out. I hope it's a grind because making it easy to get is just no fun. Since we're not allowing non-tangible items on this list, I'm not going to include the nuke contract itself, but I'll go ahead and include the nuke elements. Reminder, to get a nuke in Warzone 2, you had to win five games in a row to get a shot at it, which is an outstanding achievement in its own right. But like the Bunker 11 Easter egg, I'm going to go on a limb here and say the overwhelming majority of players have yet to successfully complete the nuke contract, let alone get the contract in the first place. However, to be in a lobby with someone going for the nuke, but then to encounter them, kill them, and see the elements in front of you is going to be pretty rare as well. In my whole career, playing Warzone 2, I only encountered two teams going for the nuke, and both were cheating, so if you really want to get technical, I don't even count those. However, towards the end of Warzone 2, for like a week or two, BR quads had like a community nuke that any team could go for, so that's where I personally first wielded the elements on my own. Sadly, I wasn't able to complete the nuke. Nowadays, it's a little more common, especially with the rebirth nuke. Although you can still win five games in a row, which is insanely difficult, having the option of just 30 wins in a season is much more obtainable, especially with rebirth, where resurgence wins are just like way 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 more common and if you've been playing rebirth a lot since launch you've probably been in a lobby where someone's gone for the nuke and since the map is small and less players you might have even seen the elements by now I don't want to spend too much time here, but in Warzone 2, they added a white box variant, which is the rarest crate you can find in the game. They mainly spawn at strongholds and black sites, which not only have gold loot, but more importantly, just drop an insane amount of money, like way more money than any box could ever. Just figured I would throw these in here while we're talking about Warzone 2. <laughs> I had a really hard time confirming when these were added to the game, but it's looking like the introduction of a Sheikah Island is when you could start finding loadout drop markers through ground loot. While I was trying to find footage of loadout drop markers in ground loot, I found a lot of inconsistencies. Like I found some people finding them in bunkers, which I didn't know was possible. Also, there's this footage of someone finding some on Caldera. So I don't really know when it was first implemented in the game, but it seems very, very inconsistent. I wish I could find an exact drop rate for these because this is something that you could go weeks without finding. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a loadout that you don't have to buy and it's immediately equipped to your field upgrade slot. Pretty sure now they're available on all maps, just with an extremely rare chance of being found. I know they were way more common on Fortune's Keep for a while since we had the looting spree power up, which pretty much just increased the rarity of loot the more you looted while it was active. So that was kind of fun. Once you got that power up, you would just start spamming every box you saw. There's other ways to get it. Like I'm pretty sure black sites give it to you in Warzone 3. And then I think if you get the key card on Rebirth Island and bring it to the stronghold, that also gets you a load up drop marker. Kind of like little things like that to guarantee it, but still really rare. But this is another item that I think should still stay rare because of how powerful it is. Dead Silence has been around since Warzone's launch, but for some reason in Warzone 3, it feels like you never find it anymore. I swear for a minute, it wasn't even in the ground loot rotation. The only times I've even got Dead Silence these days is by getting a platinum key card on Rebirth Island. I'm kind of glad it's not as common now because it's kind of like stopping power in a way where there's just nothing you can do about dying since someone can just pull up on you without you even knowing. I don't know if there's any statistics backing up my point here, but Dead Silence in Warzone 3 feels very absent. <laughs>
With Warzone 3, we don't really have a whole lot of items that are all that rare. Then came Fortune's Keep in Season 2, where we not only got the Ray Gun, but the Wonder Waff as well. The Ray Gun is decently rare, but you can pretty much always get it if you really want to. Maybe not right at the launch of Fortune's Keep on Warzone 3, since everyone was going for it, but nowadays, it's pretty easy to get. You jump on the crates, flip the switches, and ta-da, you've got the Ray Gun room unlocked. But the gun that's much more rare, I would say, is the Wonder Waff. The way you got this was during the game, there would be an event that would be something like deal the most damage, or have the most money, or loot the most crates, or have the most kills. And the teams in the top three of this category after the time was up got access to a secret weapons crate. This crate would either have a ray gun or a wonder waff, which further supports the no guarantee for the wonder waff. Being in the top three was one thing, then getting to the weapons crate with two other teams going for it was another. Then it's essentially an RNG coin flip if the wonder waff wants to show up or not. There are a few other methods of getting the wonder waff, such as the cursed relic. Once you grab the cursed relic, you have to get five kills without dying, which doesn't really sound that hard, but since you have to get five kills without dying, after finding the relic, which mind you, there's only one of in the entire map. Not exactly a cakewalk. Then there's also the zombie contract where you have to just go eradicate zombies from a specific area. Honestly, this one's pretty easy, but it doesn't even guarantee the Wonder Waff. A lot of times it's just like a gold gun. Half the time it's not even a wonder weapon. So also pretty dang rare. In my opinion, the Wonder Waff is like really bad. Half the time it doesn't even feel like your shots are hitting. And then I think no matter what, it's going to take two shots to down someone. Maybe even three. I could be wrong. I don't really use it that much because of how bad it is. It's fun to have kind of cool, but definitely not all that good. The Ray Gun, on the other hand, was awesome and dealt crazy splash damage that let you wipe teams effortlessly. After the Season 3 Reloaded update, they added the Research Vessel, which had a special buy station on it that allows you to buy one of the Wonder Weapons for 10k. Each match, it's random as to which one you can buy, but definitely makes the Wonder Waff much more easy to obtain now. This is another item that I'm basing solely off of anecdotal evidence. This was also brought back with Season 2, and I almost thought the PDS was bugged to not be in the game at launch. Turns out it's just pretty dang rare. This is probably the most common item on this list, but it's very possible you go several games without even seeing one. It felt like Warzone 1's PDS was much more common and that every team had at least one player with one in the end game. However, I do think it would be kind of broken if these were abundant in Warzone now, since you can stow them and whatnot in your inventory. It would make for an almost infinite gas play if abused properly, so I like that they're rare. With the return of Rebirth Island, we got the biometric scanner, and this is pretty much just a slot machine. You put your thumb up to it, and it gives you a random key card from Bronze to Orion. Now, obviously Orion is the rarest, but I've still yet to see a single person get this Orion key card. I've scourged the internet for any footage of someone getting, and I simply cannot find any. And it's not like it's just some rumored thing. Raven has confirmed this in the patch notes to exist, so I guess they just weren't kidding about it being extremely rare. Anyways, the next rarest is a polyatomic key card, which I still haven't even gotten myself. The others seem to have a lot better luck. There's plenty of footage of people getting this. I've even played with people getting it live. As far as what they get you, I'll go ahead and read each tier off. So bronze is random ammunition, a little bit of cash, armor plates, lethals, and tacticals. Silver is the same thing, but you also get a perk package and a little bit more cash. Gold is the same thing, but you also get a plate carrier, a field upgrade, and even more cash. Platinum is the same thing, but you also get a kill streak and even more cash. Polyatomic is the same thing, but you get to buy three things at the buy station for free and a redacted gun. And Orion is the same thing, but you get two redacted redacted guns. If you don't know, a redacted gun is a gun that has eight attachments, or I think really just considered more than five attachments, but these have eight. This is probably the most RNG dependent aspect we've ever seen in Warzone, and it's honestly really fun. Considering you can only do it one time per player per game, I think it's a nice little boost to your game no matter how big or small. I've read something along the lines of the more time you play and the more times you've tried the biometric scanner, the more likely you are to get better loot. Maybe just with time, we'll finally get someone to get the Orion keycard, because right now, truly, I don't think a single person has. As far as as balancing goes, I think this adds just the right amount of RNG because if I'm being honest, I've used the redacted Ram 7 and it's honestly pretty trash. Funny thing is, I didn't even get it myself, I got it off of someone's body. Perk package, cash, and other loot you get from the key cards are way better than the redacted guns. But those are the rarest items in Warzone history. If you made it this far to the video, you must have liked it at least a little bit, so maybe consider subscribing. I know there are a few things I didn't mention, such as like advanced UAVs or juggernaut armor, but I wasn't really sure I'd incorporate those to this list, so I just left them out. However, if there's something that isn't on this list that you think deserves to be on it, please let me know down below. Be sure to check out some of my other Warzone history videos. Stop by one of my live streams right here on YouTube. Don't even have to go to another app. Join my Discord if you're feeling crazy. And if you liked, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Comment if you'd like. And thank you so much for watching.